Hi guys, my name's Matt from Avalites here at HQ in London, and today we're going to be going through AutoBlend. So AutoBlend in AI is a really quick and easy way of getting multiple projectors warped and blended into one image uh, using a camera for calibration or even a manual input. So to get started, first we will need our screen fixture set up in AI. So this will be our surface that we're projecting onto. The in this example, we'll do a two projector blend. So two HD projectors in our stage construction. Move them back a little bit uh, using Shift and Alt to rotate around in our 3D view. And I'll move this first projector off to the left, give it a name, and we'll just copy and paste those settings onto our second projector. The name as well. So now that we've got our two projectors set up in our stage construction, we're going to want to set up our screen. And this will just be a temporary measure for now, but if we figure that we have around a 20% overlap region, we know that 1920 times 2 will be 3840. So I'm going to go for just a 3000 pixels in the X resolution and a 1,000 pixels in the Y resolution. And we can change our scaling to match that as well. So here we have our ultra wide screen in this setup. Don't forget to give it a name. And there we go. So then I'm going to get some test patterns onto that as well. You can see that there. So one of the first things to do is to actually check out your projectors and your outputs from AI that it's sending across the full frame. So I like to just stick a full screen image on outputs two and three, just to confirm that our projectors are sort of aligned and that everything is outputting correctly. Then we can delete that. And we want to assign our left projector to output two and our right projector to output three. And then we're going to go over to this camera icon here. So this is what enables auto blend within AI. You'll see it's now taken over those outputs. So then we go configure. And calibrate. Single client calibration. And from here on in, it's more or less just next, next, next. So we can choose which outputs we are using for the auto blend process, whether we're doing a flat screen, a curved screen. Any surface is more useful for like rock faces or hanging drapes. Typically, you won't really need to use any surface. Stick to the simplest size surface uh, for your stage. And we can also do a manual setup if we don't have a camera. So then camera settings, select your camera and hit next. In our case, we've got two projectors in a horizontal strip. So we're just going to leave that as is. But if your projectors are in arbitrary positions, you can select grid arbitrary. Next. So here we are greeted with our masking page and our camera options. So we'll want to go into the camera options. Depending on what camera you have, this window might look a little bit different. Currently, I'm using uh, just a USB webcam for this process. But the camera that we recommend is an IDS UI camera, which the link will be in the description below. Um, one of the things you want to make sure when you're using your camera is that there are no auto functions enabled. So if you have something like auto exposure enabled, it might uh, make your calibration process change in the middle of it. So I'm actually going to just disable that and I'm going to adjust it manually until we get good contrast between the black and the white surfaces. Um, other things are your focus. I tend to click auto just to let the autofocus take its form and then disable it before we start. And saturation. This is a color camera, but we only need the black and white information. So I've just taken all of that out of there. 
And be sure that there's no like low light compensation on this camera enabled. Uh, that will affect the performance. So here we can create a mask using our drawing tool. We will draw an outline of our projection region. Don't worry about this being too precise. We can always change it later. Just make sure that the lines overlap and taking the paint bucket icon, tap on the outside to ignore everything in that region. And what that tells us is the process will only occur inside this region and the program will ignore everything outside. Okay, next. Next, perform a new scan. So here you're looking for the smallest number of dots where the image is green. So green basically tells the auto blend program that it can clearly distinguish between the dots. The smaller we go, the more precise it can be, but it might not be accurately distinguishing between the dots. So we want the smallest possible dots while still maintaining them to be green. So around, in this, for this camera, let's go a little bit higher. There we go, that looks good to me. So we just hit next. And that looks good to me. If there's anything wrong at this point, it becomes very obvious where you would start to see like swirls or part of the image missing. So I'm just gonna go next. And there we go. There we have one image of the two projectors warped and blended together. Uh, so I'm going to hit next one more time. Save and finish. Uh, leaving that as settings will allow AI to automatically pull those when we close down this window. I'm going to say yes. And just quickly, I'm going to go activate and turn off smooth border. And that allows us to get a good idea of the proper image size as we go here and actually adjust the scaling of each corner based on the real world dimensions. If we, for example, have a proper screen in place, we can make sure each corner lines up with the cor that corner of the screen. Uh, you can also add in additional columns or rows if you want to change the warping portion. So if we need to add a little bit of a curve in there or in there, um, and you can toggle keyboard fine and coarse from here. So there we can draw that in even smoother. And there we go. So now that we've got our calibration, we'll go file, save project and export, just using the settings and overriding that file. And when we come to export, we will select our display compound and you shouldn't need to change any of these settings, just hit export. And because we've done that, AI will automatically detect those settings when it loads up next. And one extra little bit, in this extras menu, there's an option for calculate optimal content size. And this is a really useful window because it tells you a couple of things. One, it tells you your relative overlap size. That's the amount of image from each projector that's overlapping in the center. Um, but what's even more useful 
is our effective content resolution and our aspect ratio. So we can use this back in our stage construction page to get an accurate representation of the exact number of pixels used in our canvas screen surface. So I'm going to take note of that number, 2869921, and we'll just close this down. So we can then close this. And now that we're back in AI, we're going to assign output 3 and output 2. And there we go, we can see our image loaded into AI. Finally, the last thing I'll do is go back into our stage construction and use those numbers that we had before. So in this case, 2869 by 962. And there we go. Now our screen is uh, with square pixels and whatever content that we throw up will be to its natural aspect ratio and we can go in and change aspect modes if we need letterbox or crop later on in our performance page. If you don't know how to do that, check out the video before on layer controllers. And so there we go. That's how we can use AutoBlend to warp and blend together multiple projector outputs into one surface. And that's how you use AutoBlend. If you'd like to know more, watch our other videos, check out more about AI, and I'll see you guys soon.